the eye wants to be told what to look at. Remember that. And when you're framing the thing, you're making it easier on the eye. I'm on a roll with these facade videos. This is an actual project I worked on and I just want to share a little bit of the design principles that I applied here and how we turned this into this. So if you're interested, then please keep on watching. So for some context, this project is in Australia. The client found me on YouTube and um, he reached out to me. He said, hey Malak, I have an architect in Australia and they did my facade and there's just something off about it and I can't seem to know how to fix it. Um, and I told him, okay, why don't you send me the drawings? Um, I will take a look at that and then I will see what we can do. As I mentioned in my previous video, I like to diagnose the project first. Uh, it's like when you go to um, doctor's office, they ask you how old are you, they ask you how much you weigh, how tall you are, so just like some basic stats. So this project is a one-story um, residential home um, and it is super, super horizontal. So um, I don't have a frontal view, but I'm just gonna um, show you in this perspective. So our canvas is very horizontal. Um, what else? Uh, we have a very prominent um, element here going across the front facade and we have a vertical element. Um, okay, we notice that the garage um, is very flat and kind of doing its own thing. It's a little bit left out. There are a few elements that are existing and um, we can review those elements in a little bit, but there's some thoughts that were done in a good phase and we like that. So we're just gonna have to enhance that a little bit. Um, okay, so now we diagnose the facade and we know what kind of issues and what kind of disease it's suffering from. Now we can get to designing, okay? So let's look at the design part. So we said that it's a very um, horizontal facade. So let's do like the low hanging fruits. Let's start with the easy things to fix. When you have a, a long facade like this, you automatically need to have a vertical element to break off that. So this actually was done by the previous architect and I think that was smart of them to do because otherwise the facade is just going to read super long and plain. Like it's not gonna be contained. And notice what this vertical element is doing. This vertical element is dividing the facade into one third, two third. If you're not familiar with this, um, go watch my previous video about one third, two third rule and then come back. So briefly, if you don't wanna go watch my other video. So the one third, two third, actually what it does is it, bre it breaks the facade. So you get one third of the facade doing its thing and the two third doing its own thing. The reason why we do one third, two third, and we don't do the middle and we don't split in the middle because when you split in the middle, you're stuck with symmetry. That's it, you're done, game over. You literally have to copy on, or mirror whatever you have on this side to this side. And a lot of times we don't wanna do that in modern design because modern design is not about symmetry. Symmetry, again, is beautiful. I have nothing against symmetry. Like a lot of people, they're like, oh yeah, these architects nowadays, they don't do anything symmetrical. Symmetry is beautiful, I'm not against it, but there is a space and time for it. If you're designing something classical, please, by all means, do symmetry. Actually, if you're designing something classical, you shouldn't be doing one third, two third, because you're gonna mess up the whole facade. But for the sake of this exercise, one third, two third is actually in our favor. Okay, so let's move forward. So we got our one third, two third, we got our vertical element. Now we're gonna talk about framing. I talked uh, in my previous video about framing and how I, I, I actually use the concept of um, eyebrows. So eyebrows, if you don't have eyebrows, your face is gonna look completely different. Your features are gonna look like they're floating in your face. So we need to ground your facade. Framing is also, like another example for framing is like literally the frame of your art. So if you got a canvas of an art piece or something, and usually it's like in the roll and you open that, you can literally just stick that to the wall, right? That's fine. You can do that, but that doesn't look right. Um, you need to frame it. So you're guiding the eye to like, this is the border. This is where it's supposed to look at. The eye wants to be told what to look at. Remember that, I'm gonna repeat it. The eye wants to be told what to look at. And when you're framing the thing, you're making it easier on the eye. 
So if we look at the previous example here, so one frame and mistake that they did in this previous facade is that they didn't continue the frame here. And that really threw my client and whoever was looking at this facade um, off. They were like, what is it that it's missing? We can't quite tell what it is. So I like that they start with the frame, but like they just, they're like, the eye is like, okay, okay, okay. And then you stop it in the middle. They're like, ah, oh. like it's such a harsh cutoff. Just continue it. And that's pretty much a quick fix of what we did here. So we just took that frame and we took it all the way out. That's it, like it's not rocket science. It's very simple. So now the eye is like, okay, this thing is one big thing. It's one big family. So now I know what I'm looking at. And you know, I was reading it. Um, I was reading an, an article by Canva the other day uh, and they're like the graphic design company and graphic designers do frames very, very well. And they were saying that you often don't notice a frame until it's not there. Like a lot of times the frame is there, but you don't notice it. But once you remove it, you're like, holy, that makes the world of a difference. So here we need to frame it, especially if you start a frame horizontally, please, please, please continue it and bring it down. That way it's a closed loop. But if you just leave it hanging, it's gonna confuse the eye. Um, okay, so what else? Um, this, as I mentioned earlier, this is a one story project and um, the frame is good. Um, but it's making it a bit too heavy on the facade. So it's really squishing it and it's making the facade like look like it's carrying this heavy weight on top. So I didn't want to get rid of the frame um, completely because again, it helps to a certain extent. So how are we going to fix that? To make that frame look a little bit lighter, we have to counter it with another frame. And by doing that, we have to... Um, you can't just like put another frame on top of it because if you put another frame on top of it, you're, it's, it's defeating the purpose. You're just making it heavier and heavier on the facade. But what we want to do is we want to put a frame, but we're going to put it on the background. So ideally, every facade, ideally, every facade should not be flat. <laughs> if you watch my videos, you know by now, if your facade is flat, you don't have a facade. So ideally, every facade should have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. If you only can do two, do a foreground and a background. But if you want to like, if you want to take it up a notch, you can do a middle ground. So let's identify the foreground, background, middle ground. So I would say this is very dominant. This right here is extremely dominant. Um, so I would say that's the foreground. The middle ground um, I would say this is the middle ground and the background I would say the um, garage and the entrance and the window here like all of this that's the background so if we were to number it this would be one this would be two this would be three and this way again you're guiding the eye to what to look first foreground middle ground background so that's one trick that you can do if you want to take the weight off of a frame or if the frame is too thick and you don't want it to be all about the frame put something in the middle ground and that's going to distract the eye like a good distraction when i say distract don't distract the eye by like nonsense stuff but a good distraction is just makes um it takes off all that pressure on the frame so not everybody just looking at the frame which was the case here um everybody was like oh this is everything you look at like Actually, this vertical element is like, it's in the background. You don't even see it. You see the frame first, then you see the vertical element. Um, okay, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is this wall here. So this wall right here is a quadrant. If you remember my previous video, I, I break down the facades to quadrants. So this is a quadrant, this is a quadrant, and this is a quadrant. So let's focus on this quadrant here. This quadrant here, is very very square it doesn't get any more square than that so when you have something that's square and also small you don't have a lot of options but to obey and surrender to that shape so what they did here instead they did a rectangular window that square is not gonna like that that square is gonna 
demand a square window and it's begging for it like when you look at this wall here it's just like underwhelming you're like huh really it's a missed opportunity so we want to give that wall whatever that wall wants so that wall wants a square window we're gonna give it a square window and it's a nice picture square window and um the client had a nice view from that room so and i think i believe it was his office i think yeah it was his office so got a nice um lighting and nice um a view of that room of that office um but we're not done yet just by giving a square window that doesn't mean you're done when you do a square on a square um that's that becomes a little bit flat and that becomes a little bit expected and when you have two shapes that are the same um on top of each other you don't have a contrast so now what do we do do we introduce a contrast do we do a rectangular but they've done the rectangular before and it didn't work so what do we need to do here is we need to fix it by creating another frame around it i'm not exaggerating with the frame seriously it works so actually i think i i tried an exercise where i removed the frame of um this window here and it looked really weird it looked very blunt and um like something is missing so if you can't do a contrast in terms of different shapes then just create depth if you create depth it will fix any design issue that you have so we just did a frame around it and i don't know if you can see it here so you see how i have a frame like this is a frame around it and it just you know makes the window pop a little bit so just when you frame that window it makes it pop a little bit um okay so now that we covered the big rock and the structure and you know the geometry of the facade now we can talk uh, about the pebbles and you know like the secondary things so a few things that i want to mention this balcony here this terrace has so many mullions it's way too distracting for such a small space you can do many mullions like that if it's like a commercial or if the balcony is like spanning over like a high rise or something like that but in such a small project less is more so we had to switch that to just plain glass railing for a cleaner look um the materiality of this vertical element this vertical element it could have been just plain um paint but it would not pop as much as if we do like some textures or some materials especially in a facade like this there's a lot of massing and there's a lot of stucco so we need to break that a little bit and um let me show you here what that could have looked if we did just a color like that if you can just visualize it for a minute here it looks okay because the structure and the frame is working because the vertical element is doing its thing but it could be better so we introduce a little bit of texture to the facade so that's why we did the um brick over there so we did a brick that goes with the modern look and of course we always do down lights sconces landscaping things like that to just make the facade look a little bit more um approachable a little bit more homey and cozy and um that's pretty much it so that's everything we did to fix this facade sometimes the um solution is not that far off from what you started like this facade already had a good foundation they had some thoughts but they just didn't execute them till the end and that was kind of like a half-baked facade make sure you always frame your facades look at what the wall is asking to do like if you have a square wall that is very small try not to fight that geometry um and just more importantly have fun with it Sometimes fixing a facade is not that much work if you know the design principles. But if you don't, then you're going to struggle and you're not going to be able to pinpoint what the issue is. So I hope that was helpful. If you're a designer, I highly, highly, highly recommend you study um, design principles. I know there aren't that many articles about design principles in architecture, but that's fine. Just use graphic design, use UX, UI, use any other type of design field and a look at how they are using 
the design principles and try to apply that to architecture and interior design because that's literally the only tip I can give you that will elevate your designs. There's nothing else that will elevate your designs better than design principles. Again, you can go on Pinterest and like look at um, inspiration and stuff and you will be able to tell what looks good, what doesn't, but the question is why does it look good? Why does it look good in certain projects and it doesn't look in other projects? And when you take a project from Pinterest, and instead of just copying a project from Pinterest, try to study it. Um, because that way, um, as I always say, it's going to help you learn how to fish instead of somebody giving you a fish. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you again for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, uh, leave me a comment or whatever you feel like doing. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.